The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. More than 20 years ago, the Kraft Foods Company introduced a wonderful new salad dressing, a superbly smooth, delicious-tasting salad dressing called Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip was so remarkably good that it soon became the most popular salad dressing ever created. Now Miracle Whip outsells the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined, and good cooks everywhere depend on it to make their salad better tasting. To bring out the best in your salads, use the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. Well, it seems the great Gildersleeve is always beset with petty problems, trying to raise his teenage nephew, Leroy. The boy is all hands, all feet, and all noise. For instance, the water commissioner is coming home this afternoon with a replacement of his favorite recording seems Leroy accidentally sat on the last one. Why, George, I can't be without a record of Indian love call. I am calling you. <laughs> yeah, probably wasting my money, though. Time I get home, the record player may be broken. That you all, Mr. Gilsey? Yes, Bertie. I thought that was you. Yeah. Because you didn't slam the door. Uh, speaking of slamming doors, is Leroy home? No, sir, but he was. Yeah, I see he left his books and lunch bill right in the middle of the floor. Where is he? Well, he came in the house, went through the refrigerator and out the back door. He's off playing ball somewhere. Oh, my goodness. I'll pick up his books and lunch pills. No, 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 Bertie. He'll do that. He will? Yeah, I'll insist on it. Half the time, this place looks like a shambles. Well, we got a young cyclone running through here every day. Hi, Aunt. Uh, Leroy, don't slam the door. <laughs> Gee. What's the matter, Uncle? You look pale. Uh, Leroy, I want to talk to you. Okay, right after I phone Piggy. Boy, what a ball game. Leroy, don't throw your bat in the corner. I was aiming for the umbrella stand. <laughs> <laughs> Bertie. Yes, I'm going. It... Well, Leroy, pick up your things. Put away your lunch pail, books, and bat. Uh, sure, right after I talk to Piggy. Don't sit on my new phonograph record. I won't. And I want to talk to you. I'm listening. Oh, hello, Piggy. Zeke. Piggy, I want to tell you about the ball game. There have to be some changes around here, young man. Okay, young. Uh, what's that, Piggy? Let's settle down a little. We won't slam doors. We'll pick up our things. Okay, young. She did, Piggy. I'll be right over. Goodbye. Hey. Leroy, where are you going? Piggy's mother baked some hot cinnamon rolls. Yeah. Now, just a minute. Yeah? Before you run off again, pick up your ball bat, your books, your lunch pail. Okay. And put them away. Oh, sure, I'll put them right in here. And don't toss them in the closet. Oh. Sorry, Unc. I already let go of them. <laughs> Excuses. I'll pick them up later. See ya. And don't slam the... Oop. I have to do something about that boy. <laughs> yeah, I can't get over Leroy. He paid no attention to me this afternoon. Well, I'll get a magazine from PV and go home and read. Leroy will be in bed and it'll be quiet. Unless he goes to sleep with his radio on again. Hello, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. On your way to see your lady friend this evening? No, no, I'm seeing Irene tomorrow night. Yeah, I want a magazine. Okay, well. Any suggestions? Well, do you want to read or just look at the pictures? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, here's a movie magazine, rather unusual one. Oh? Has a horse on the cover. <laughs> yeah, I'll skip the horse and take this one of June Allison. <laughs> I thought the horse would run second. <laughs> you care to take a comic book to Leroy? No. 
But I could use a book on how to tame a teenager. How's that? P.V., I have to do something about Leroy. Getting so I have to keep after him all the time. If I tell him to do a thing once, I tell him a hundred times. Well, when I was a boy, my father only told me once. Yeah, mine too. By George, from now on, I'm going to tell Leroy only once and see that it's done. Mm, it used to work. When my father told me to fill the wood box, I would. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> if I didn't fill the wood box, he took me to the wood shed. <laughs> Well, boys don't realize how easy they have it these days. Mm, I know. I used to fill the kerosene lamps, milk the cows. Peavy, did you live on a farm? Well, I'm here to tell you. I met Mrs. Peavy on a farm. You know? I went over one evening to help with the cows and ended up with old Bossy. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Mrs. Peavy? <laughs> well, she is a little Bossy, but that was the name of a cow. <laughs> Uh, by the way, wh what is Mrs. Peavy's name? Mrs. Peavy. I mean, what do you call her at home? Mrs. Peavy. Hey. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'm going home and start training Leroy. I wouldn't worry about Leroy, Mr. Gildersleeve. He's just a typical high-powered teenager. Oh, he's way out of line, Peavy. But I'm going back to discipline. He can't go wrong if he turns out the way I did. You <laughs> will know I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Hey, hey, yes, sir. Phoebe's right. When our father spoke, we jumped. And from now on, I'm going to make Leroy toe the mark. Yeah, I guess I better hang my hat in the closet. Set a good example. Oh, for... Baseball bat, lunch pail, books. He never did pick them up. Leroy! I'm upstairs on the phone, now. Huh? Well, get off and come down here. Come down. Downstairs, young man. Okay. All right, George, it's time for a showdown. Are you coming, Leroy? Sure. Zeke. Yeah? Leroy, must you jump to the landing? You wanted me in a hurry, didn't you? What's up? Your things are still down on the floor. That's what's up. Oh, I meant to do that. Yeah, well, good intentions are not enough. When I was a boy, my father told me only once. Gosh, you must have had a swell father. <laughs> You're always after me. Yeah. Well, I have to keep after you because I'm too lenient. From now on, I insist on instant obedience. Gosh. Just none of this gosh stuff. Say yes, sir. What is this, the army? <laughs> well, that sort of discipline might not be a bad idea. Did you mow the lawn today? I figured I could do a better job Saturday when I have more time. <laughs> You're making excuses again. But, gosh! What? Yes, sir. <laughs> Another thing. Did you make your bed this morning? Well, I figured if I waited until tonight, it would be fresher when I got in it. <laughs> Young man, go make your bed right now and report back to me when you've made it. Okay. What did you say? Yes, sir. Oh, dear. Leroy, get a move on. You act as if you're being sent to Siberia. <laughs> Leroy. By George, I'll get some action around here and know the reason why. Mr. Gilsey? Yes, Bertie? Is it safe for me to come in? Come in, Bertie? Yes, sir. I was just setting Leroy straight. Yes, sir. After he makes his bed, he's reporting back to me, and I'm going to have him clean out that closet. Yes, sir. Then I'm going to blow taps and send him to bed. Yes, sir. You got a bugle? <laughs> well, I'll get one if necessary. Now, did you wish to see me about something? Yes, I was wondering if you saw that letter on the mantel from your Aunt Hattie. Aunt Hattie? You don't suppose she's come to visit, do you? No, I hope not. Let me read it. And perhaps I shouldn't say this, but I can't think of anybody who upsets me like Aunt Hattie does. Yes, sir. She sure gives you hell, Columbia. Yes, let me see. Yes, well, you I think I'm... No, she isn't coming, Bertie. No, sir. She's hinting, however. Who's hinting? Leroy, is your bedmate? Yes, sir. Who's hinting? 
Well, it seems Aunt Hattie would like to come for a visit. Yeah? Yeah, I'm going to my study now. After you've cleaned your things out of the closet, report to me. Well, gosh, after I clean the closet, it'll be time to go to bed. Yeah, that's why I want you to report. I want to send you to bed. How about that, Bertie? <laughs> He's on the mark. We just want Aunt Hattie to come, but if you ask me, we already got an Aunt Hattie. What's that? He's beginning to boss me the way she bosses him. Hey, I just thought of a way to take the heat off me. <laughs> Why, I knew you'd think of something. It seems I'm coming to your house a lot, Throckmorton. Well, I want you to hear some new recordings I bought. Don't tell me you bought another Indian love call. No, no, no. This is string stuff for romantic listening. <laughs> oh. Good evening, Miss Henshaw. Hello, Leroy. Good evening, sir. <laughs> Hello, my boy. I wish to report that I mowed the lawn, sir. Well, good. Uh, come into the parlor, Irene. Thank you. Good night, Leroy. I'll come along with you to finish my report. Well, <laughs> Leroy has some little duties to report on Irene. Oh, please go right ahead. I made my bed this morning, and when I came home, I took my lunch pail to the kitchen, and I didn't drop my books in the middle of the floor. Sir? Oh, my goodness, Leroy, let's not overdo it. Very good, Sir? He even salutes? Yeah, well, that's his own idea. What's come over, Leroy? Oh, he's trying to embarrass me because I insist on a little discipline around here. You've carried things a little too far, haven't you, Throckmorton? Not me. I'm just trying to arrange it so there'll be some peace and quiet around here this summer. Oh. Yeah, I don't want any distractions when you and I are sitting on the sofa listening to music. <laughs> <laughs> Great idea, building a phonograph into the coffee table. <laughs> Don't have to get up to turn it on and off. What are you going to play for me? Well, like I say, it's pretty romantic. Listen to this. What is it? Love's dream after the ball. Ah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Speaking of love, Irene. Oh, sir. Oh. <laughs> Interrupting something? What is it, Leroy? I've been tidying up your study. Uh, thank you. Do you want me to throw away this letter from Aunt Hattie? You may. You don't care what happens to her letters, do you? Leroy, don't make it sound as if I'm not fond of Aunt Hattie. If you don't want her to come visit us. No, no. Boys get wrong impressions, Irene. We must respect our relatives, my boy. Oh, of course. Then what I did is all right. What'd you do? I haven't seen dear old Aunt Hattie for so long, I invited her to come. Oh, who? Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Here's a wonderful new kind of salmon salad sandwich. One of those all too rare ideas that are easy enough for the family, fancy enough for company. First of all, make some good salmon salad. Use drained canned salmon, crispy chopped celery, and sliced stuffed olives. Mix them all together, then add the salad dressing. And I do mean the salad dressing. The one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip has a fine, lively, teasing flavor. A flavor that'll make your salad taste its delicious best. And it's a flavor that no other salad dressing has. Because Miracle Whip is made from a secret craft recipe that combines the qualities of old-fashioned boil dressing and rich mayonnaise. As you add Miracle Whip to your other ingredients, you'll notice this salad dressing has a remarkably smooth, creamy texture. That's the result of thorough, careful blending with special craft beaters. For the sandwich part of this treat, instead of bread, you'll need some nice rosy tomatoes. For each serving, peel one tomato and cut it into three crosswise slices. Then place the bottom slice of tomato on a lettuce leaf and alternate the tomato slices with two layers of salmon salad. Add a dab of Miracle Whip to the top of the tomato, and there it is. A tempting sandwich of tomato slices and salmon salad. 
Keep a jar of Miracle Whip on hand always for all kinds of good-to-look-at, good-to-eat salads. You won't know how delicious your salads can taste till you make them with America's favorite salad dressing, Miracle Whip. Well, the great Gildersleeve may have a bigger brain than his nephew, but it doesn't work as fast. When Leroy felt his uncle was carrying discipline too far, he contrived to have one, someone in the house discipline his uncle. Leroy, why did you ask Aunt Hattie to visit us? Well, she kept hinting on, so I was just the courteous little boy you want me to be. Oh, sure. Besides, I wanted to see how well I'm behaving, thanks to you, sir. Well, I'm not looking forward to it, believe me. I don't know why you hate to see Aunt Hattie come. I get along with her swell. Yeah, she thinks you're an angel. She always picks on me. Yeah. Hey. Yes, please. Yes, Bertie? You want me to fix your den for Aunt Hattie to stay in this trip? My den? Why can't she stay upstairs in Marjorie's old room? Last time she said she couldn't stand the altitude. Yeah, that's because... Because she's always on her high horse. She had me run up and down like an elevator. I think Aunt Hattie should stay where she's happiest. Too bad she isn't happy at home. You fix your den, Father, Mr. Gilsey? Yeah, fix my den. If you'll excuse me, sir, I think I'll go pick some flowers for Aunt Hattie's room. Oh, my goodness. And, sir, you better get all your cigars out of the house. You're all right. When Leroy invited Aunt Hattie, I knew I was in trouble. Well, trouble has to start someplace, and this didn't start with Leroy. What's this, Bertie? Somebody made trouble for somebody else. Now we're all in trouble. Yeah, well, don't blame me. Well, I ain't blaming nobody. But you started making Leroy walk the straight and narrow. Now somebody else has to walk the straight and narrow. You well. Yes, sir. You got Leroy walking the straight and narrow. Now somebody else got to walk the straight and narrow. Yeah, all right, Miss Bertie. Miss Gilsey, do you know who has to walk the straight and narrow now? Yes, Bertie. That's right. Somebody else. <laughs> Well, come in, Aunt Hattie, and welcome back. Thank you, Throckmorton. Well, well, hello, Miss Hattie. Hello, Bertie. My, my, you're looking well. I'm fine. But I notice Throckmorton has put on weight again. Well, a little, perhaps. I'll have to come into the kitchen and supervise his diet, Bertie. Yes, ma'am. Calories, that's your problem, Throckmorton. Too many fat calories. Here's your bag, Aunt Hattie. Oh, thank you, Leroy. Oh, he is such a dear, considerate boy. Oh, me. This all you brought, Miss Hattie? Just an overnight case? Her trunk's on the way, Bertie. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Put Aunt Hattie's bag in my den, Leroy. Okay, sir. I couldn't stand your den again, Throckmorton. Oh? I was very uncomfortable when I was here last. Well, I thought going upstairs bothered you. Going upstairs may bother you, but that's because you're getting obese. <laughs> you should do something about that, Aunt. Leroy. Take Aunt Hattie's bag upstairs. Yes, sir. You aren't being too firm with Leroy, are you, Throckmorton? What's this? You shouldn't break a sensitive boy's spirit. Oh, would you like a cup of tea, Miss Hattie? Well, I like my tea a certain way, Bertie. Perhaps I should make it. No, Aunt Hattie, Bertie knows how to make tea. Very well. I don't want anybody to think I'm hard to get along with. Oh, no. <laughs> no, ma'am. Uh, Bertie, you go fix the tea while I talk to Throckmorton. I, um, <clears throat> I want to talk to him about his weight. It, well, on second thought, Aunt Hattie, maybe you should show Bertie how, to, how you like your tea. Well, now, maybe I should. Anyway, I want to see how Bertie's kept the kitchen. It's spotless. I've seen to that. Yeah, you know Bertie, Aunt Hattie. Oh, um, how do you like your tea, Throckmorton? Well, I like mine. I'll make it the way I like mine. It should be made that way. Hmm. Yeah, just as you say. Hey, George, I can't take much more of this. I'm going to get out of the house tonight. While she's out of the room, I'll phone Irene, make a date. <laughs> Aunt Hattie can't argue with that. Hello? Irene? 
This is Throckmorton. Oh, hello. Did you have a cold? <laughs> no, I, I just don't want to be heard. How about a date tonight? All right. <laughs> what do we do? Get out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> Throckmorton, what's the matter with you? Aunt Hattie's here. Oh. I'll pick you up at eight. We'll go to a movie. Who are you talking to, Throckmorton? Zeke. <laughs> uh, excuse me a minute, Irene. I'm talking to a Miss Henshaw, Aunt Hattie. She your new girlfriend? Well, I've known her for some time. I have to take her to a movie tonight. Uh, of course, if you want to go out the first night, I'm here. Well... I haven't even met this Miss Henshaw. Don't you think I should know her? Throckmorton, what's going on? Yeah, just a minute, Irene. I'm talking to Aunt Hattie. Yeah, but uh, hurry up. I left the water on in the tub. Yeah, yeah, I'll try. Now, you see, Aunt of Hattie... Of course, if you don't want me to meet your girlfriend... You know, it isn't that. Your only living aunt. Oh. <laughs> Irene. Yes? How'd you like to come over here tonight? <laughs> Irene, I'm sorry we can't go to the movie this evening. Oh, we can always go to a movie. I'm looking forward to the show at your house. What? I want to meet the woman who has you jumping through hoops. Oh, we won't see much of her. She had a long trip. She'll go to bed early. That you, Throckmorton? Yeah, it's me and Miss Henshaw. Well, I've been waiting to meet you, Miss Henshaw. Thank you. I've heard a lot about you, Aunt Hattie. <laughs> You're the school principal, Throckmorton tells me. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how Throckmorton managed to get a smart girl like you interested in him. In, in him. <laughs> 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 but I don't suppose there are many eligible men of your age around town. <laughs> no, Aunt Hattie. <laughs> Let's go into the parlor. Yes, yes, I, I want to have a good look at Miss Henshaw. Uh, well, I didn't realize I'd have to pass inspection tonight. Well, now I see you in the light. You'll do. Thank you. Uh, shall we all sit down and chat for a minute before you have to go to bed, Aunt Hattie? <laughs> Long trip and all, you know. Oh, when I found out you were bringing one of your girls over, I took a nap so I'd be fresh for the evening. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, that was very thoughtful of you. Miss Henshaw, how long has Throckmorton been courting you? We've known each other for about two years. My goodness. Well, that's long enough, the way they do things these days. I beg your pardon? And you are not getting any younger, Throckmorton. What? Well, I like Miss Henshaw much better than that skinny girl you used to go with. Well, now, Hattie... Now, this one has a little meat on her bones. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, nice. I didn't know you picked out a girl the way you do a pork chop. <laughs> very good, Irene. Yeah. Very good. Uh, hey. Excuse me. Yes, Leroy? How do you do, Miss Henshaw? Hello, Leroy. Aunt Hattie, is there anything I can do for you before I retire? Well, Leroy, I can't think of another thing you could do for me. You've been an angel. Thank you, Aunt Hattie. Unc, before I retire, may I report to you, sir? Hey, that won't be necessary, Leroy. I put out the cans, put away my books, haven't slammed a door all day, and I put fresh flowers in Aunt Hattie's room. Ah, uh, bless you. <laughs> oh, Leroy, why don't I see you up to your room? Yeah? Well, that won't be necessary. No, 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 I insist. Come along, my boy. Excuse us, ladies. Go right ahead. I want to talk to Miss Henshaw. Now, my dear, if Ruff Horton ever does get married, you need me to come here and look after him. Oh, I can go to bed by myself. Young man, it's time I had a talk with you. What about? You know, March. Okay, okay, sir. Into your room and close the door. Okay, sir. And stop saying sir. Stop this idiotic good behavior. Why, Unc? Why can't you act like a normal boy? Gosh, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. Getting Aunt Hattie to come here and hop all over me was a sneaky trick. You mean you've 
change your mind about this discipline stuff? Yeah, let's say it can be, it can be carried too far, and I've had enough. Okay, Unc. I'll be my old lovable self. <laughs> Throckmorton, I don't know what's come over Leroy the last day or two. What's the matter, Aunt Hattie? Well, look at his books and his lunch pail, right in the middle of the floor. Yeah, I've spoken to him about that. Well, if I've told him once, I've told him a hundred times. His bed's never made, his room's never picked up. Hi, Aunt Hattie! Leroy, don't slam the... Oh, my nerves. I simply can't stand it. Uh, Leroy... Excuse me, i got to go get my baseball bat. Oh. Such noise I have never heard. Yeah, what a thoughtless boy. Good heavens. He can't you! He won't be seeing me. What's this? I've had enough. I'm packing my bag. Aunt Hattie, what do you mean? Leroy has me so exasperated, I'm leaving on the afternoon train. <laughs> well, what a fine boy. <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Add a surprise to the next fruit salad you make. Add several cubes of cranberry jelly to the fruit. Try it. And to be sure that salad is at its delicious best, be sure the salad dressing you use is Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip gives salads wonderful flavor. A lively, teasing flavor millions of folks call just right. It's a different flavor, too. One no other salad dressing has. Remember, for fine-tasting salads, there's nothing like the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. Well, Leroy, we better go up and bring down Aunt Hattie's bag. Soon be train time. I know she'd be ready to go home the minute I started acting my normal self. Yeah, well, you could have overdone it, my boy. You think so? Yeah, we don't want Aunt Hattie to go home with the wrong impression of it. Well, she had a good visit. Now you and I can have the run of the house again. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that, too. And Hattie, we're here for your bag. Uh, I'm sorry you decided to cut your trip so short, but I thought... And Hattie, you aren't back. Dr. Morton, I've decided not to go. What? I'm going to stay here and discipline Leroy. Oh, for corn's sake! <laughs> good night, folks. <laughs> Sleeve is played by Willard Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Kathy Lewis, Isabel Randolph, and Dick LeGrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Food Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Done up just right, a delicious hamburger can be truly a gourmet's delight. A big deal in eating pleasure. Of course, just about every good cook knows that a dash of craft prepared mustard really makes a hamburger. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Craft mustard naturally. There are two kinds of craft prepared mustard. Mild craft mustard if you like it smooth and delicately spiced. Snappy craft mustard with horseradish added if you like it zippy. Get both kinds of craft prepared mustard at your food store. Now play You Bet Your Life with Groucho Marx on the NBC Radio Network.